What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to give you the ultimate guide for Chrome effects in Photoshop in 2023. Alright, so I've been making these Chrome effects since I think 2018 or 2019 and along the way I've learned a couple of new techniques and I know I did a couple of videos on my channel already about this subject but I thought let's just put everything that I know so far or until now in one video. So we're going to do two different variations, this one and this one. And basically what I want to do is show you the techniques that are used in order to create this chrome-like effect and how they kind of work. What we have here is a tribal shape that's from one of my asset packages. If you want to get it for yourself, there's a link down in the description, but it's just a plain normal white layer. Let me just show you real quick. So this is what we're starting out with. So the main takeaway from technique number one is that you can have multiple layers with the same type of layer styles layered on top of each other. Might sound a little bit complicated, but I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a minute. The first thing we want to do is create a base layer uh, for our Chrome effect we put on. So essentially what we want to do here is create a method so that all of the color data in this thing will not be the same. Let me show you what I mean. So the first thing you want to do is go to the effects tab here at the bottom of your layer menu and you want to click on gradient overlay. And we'll just reset this to default so you can just follow along. And under the gradient, I'm just going to go grab a basic gradient from black to white. And I'm going to reverse that so that the dark part is at the bottom. But honestly, do whatever you want with this. Uh, this is just the way I like it. You can already see, of course, uh, there's now not the same color everywhere in this piece of tribal shape. I'm going to use a couple of more effects uh, in order to take this a little bit further. For example, the inner glow. I've just reset this to default. Um, essentially, what we want to do is up the size a little bit. And as you can see, especially here around the bottom, a white line around the uh, perimeter is formed. You can also go to the technique and change it to precise. And this gives you a little bit more of a nice contour around the shape. We're going to use the precise technique later as well. Uh, but for now, you can just pick either one of those. All right. And lastly, we need a bevel and emboss. That's basically the main takeaway from a chrome effect because this gives you a metallic look. Uh, I'm just going to reset this to default. So all we need to do here is up the size a little bit and soften this up and if you do feel like it needs a little bit more shadow you can also up the opacity of the shadow a little bit uh, and if you feel like it you can also rotate the angle and i think an angle of 110 degrees for me is fine all right so this is the basic layer and we already have this kind of like 3d vibe going on but it's not really chrome right so now i'm going to use a technique in order to create the most intricate chrome effects and i think this is also preferably uh, the way I like to do it best, but I also want to give you another technique later in the video. By pressing Ctrl or Command J on our keyboard, we're going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to right click on our layer and remove all the layer styles by clicking on clear layer style. So now we're back at a basic layer. So what we need to do now is go to the fill option here in the layer menu and we want to put this all the way to zero. And this makes our layer invisible. But the difference between opacity and fill is with an opacity of zero, nothing in this layer will be visible anymore. But with a fill of zero, we can still apply, for example, a color overlay, and that will just be visible. We're not gonna use a color overlay, but as you might already guess, we're gonna layer this with bevel and emboss effects anyway, uh, a little bit more. We'll reset this to default again. The first thing you wanna do is go to gloss contour and create a ring gloss contour, which is this one. Uh, we're gonna up the size. And as you can see, there's already a metallic edge around this uh, shape now. And that's essentially what the gloss contour does. Basically doubles the amount of light that goes around the edges here. So that's something that you uh, really want to play with. You can also play a little bit with the depth. So the more depth this has, the sharper the shape will be. Uh, I prefer mine to have a little bit of softness, but yeah, you can also play with the depth and the higher the depth and you still think it's a little bit sharp, you can also just soften it up a little bit. But in my opinion, that doesn't really look that good. Uh, I would just keep the depth a little bit lower. So something like this for me is fine. And now in order to give this a little bit color, uh, if you look at Chrome materials, there's already like a lot of color going on. There's never in these reflections and shines and holographic stuff. There's always multiple colors going on. So you need to take that into account as well. So what we're going to do here is uh, add an inner glow. And instead of a fill color, we're going to use a gradient. Let's just make a black and white gradient. Put the opacity all the way to 100%. Up the size a little bit so it's a little bit better visible. All right, so next uh, you want to add some different colors in here. And I'm not going to say which colors because this is completely up to you, of course. But a cool part about this is that you can also use this a little bit random, if uh, that makes sense. So the blend mode you want to use is difference. And as you can see, the colors are really, really randomized when you do this. So let me just take a color that's a little bit more close to uh, what we have here. 
Um, so essentially, uh, this is a way to do it, and this kind of randomizes the colors and get your colors all over the place. But if this is not something that you like and you just want to keep it a little bit more simple, what we can do is also just you know grab some similar colors. So we'll do a nice cyan and a green, and then change the color to overlay. So you can see that this uh, creates a little bit more of a unison type look, I guess. Not a unison type, you know what I mean. Like it's a little bit more of a one color, I guess. All right, click OK. So we can do this one more time. So let's hold Control or Command or J to duplicate this layer one more time. And now into the effects, uh, well, we can just uh, leave the inner glow if we want to. Or, you know, if you want to experiment a little bit, what you can also do is change this to maybe a completely different gradient and then play around with like the blend modes a little bit. For me, I'm just gonna leave mine. But what we mainly wanna do here is the bevel and emboss. So something that you can do is make it a little bit larger. And as you can see, this creates a double like extra look within. And you know, you kinda wanna use this one for the inner parts uh, so that these aren't filled up enough. Because if you have a thicker font or a thicker shape, something that you wanna use, this might look a little bit empty in the middle. So we're gonna put these soften all the way up up the size a little bit and if you think it's a little bit too drastic you can also lower the opacity of the highlights and shadows as well but this gives you a nice 3d look this is basically the technique that i talked about we layer multiple layers on top of each other with uh, different bevel and emboss effects in order to uh, use multiple different effects on top of each other to create a fake chrome look let's group these together and we'll start on technique number two so as you can see here, technique two is a little bit more experimental and also a little bit more harsh. Like I said earlier in the video, this is not the favorite technique of mine, but this gives you some interesting insights in how you can use certain adjustment layers in order to create some pretty cool stuff. So if we take a look at what's going on here, essentially we have the same base layer. Let me just grab that real quick and we'll start over again. So like the first example, we just have a nice base layer where we have a bevel and emboss and a gradient overlay in order to create uh, multiple, you know, a little bit more color data instead of just a flat white shape so there's a technique uh, we can use in order to create a nice tree effect and we're going to do that using the curves menu so if we use the curves adjustment layer essentially what we want to do is create a ring and you might recognize this and that's, that's because it's very similar to the uh, gloss contour ring so yeah, and as you can see, essentially what we're doing is we're creating one more light and dark value in between this color data, which essentially means that there's another shadow and another highlight coming in. So there's another highlight here at the darker, darker points, and there's another shadow at the lighter points. As you can see, this looks a little bit harsh as well, but uh, something that you want to take into account is, uh, let's say that we have like a nice uh, background going on. Let's just do like a gradient or something. So let's say that we have this nice gradient in the background uh, and we want to apply, you know, this uh, curves adjustment layer to our tribal shape here. Uh, but when we do that, we also manipulate the background. That's something that might happen. And usually you would uh, use this as a clipping mask then in order to only apply the curves effect to our uh, tribal shape here. But as you can see, that doesn't work. And that's because we have a layer style applied to this. And the layer styles always go on top of the adjustment layers. So essentially what this is, Photoshop is now thinking is like, okay, we have the curves here, but we also have like the uh, bevel and emboss and gradient overlays. So we're gonna apply that after the layer style menu. And there's actually an easy way to counter this. Let's just unclip this for a second. We'll group our tribal shape. And then we're gonna apply this and clip it to the group. And as you can see, now it works perfectly fine. So this is something that you have to take into account. Uh, something else that you can do as well is right click and convert this into a smart object. But that way you have to open a separate Photoshop file each time you want to edit your bevel and emboss and stuff like that. So I would just use it this way. So the next thing we want to do is uh, use an adjustment layer in order to manipulate some of the colors. And we're going to use the technique that I talked about earlier with the randomization. Uh, so essentially, let's just clip this gradient map immediately to our file here. What I usually like to do is move this white color to the middle and this black color, put the black color in the end. As you can see, this makes this chrome effect even more drastic. And of course, if you have been paying attention, this kind of does something similar at what the curves adjustment does as well. Only thing is we're gonna use some color in this. So let's just, uh, you know, add some random colors here, see if we can create something cool. And in the meantime, let's just delete this background because it's kind of like, it's kind of ugly. So uh, you might not be completely satisfied with this, but the cool part is you can also use uh, blend modes on adjustment layers. So let me just set this gradient map to difference. And this is where you can get like really detailed colors going on. 
And what the easy part is, you can also just go back and change some colors in the gradient map and it immediately uh, applies. So you can also kind of experiment with it and you know create some randomized uh, nice colors. And of course, you don't necessarily have to do the uh, ring thing like I did here. You also just uh, use the random colors as well. It just really depends on you and you know whatever you want to achieve this is a little bit more of an experimental thing and i think this can also be applied to not only like chrome effects but lots of backgrounds and stuff like that as well and i always encourage you you know go back and and see what happens if you just change something out of like some of your earlier adjustment layers this does not only help you experiment more but this also helps you understand a little bit better about what you're actually doing in photoshop so let me just grab a random gradient see what happens And of course, you can also play with the blend modes themselves. I kind of like this multiplier one. So there you have it, guys. A couple of techniques that I usually use when I'm doing chrome effects in Photoshop. And sometimes even in other projects. So if you want to have the PSD file for this video, all you have to do is become a patron of mine. So thanks to my patrons, I'm actually able to make these videos for you guys. Keep up the weekly tutorials. And I'm fortunate enough to do Dreadlabs for a living. So as a thank you for becoming a patron, you do not only get access to the project file of this video, but to the project files from all of my tutorials. As well as a 15% discount in my asset web store, where you can get the tribal shape that I just showed you, and an exclusive Discord role. So again, a huge shout out to all of my patrons. And if you want to become a patron yourself, there's a link down in the description. If you do not have the budget to support Dreadlabs, that's of course completely fine. Leaving a like, comment and a subscribe if you haven't already does a lot. So with all of that being said, this was Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you guys in the next video.